Welcome back to another segment of Behind the Scenes of the Waltons. If you're enjoying these, please do like and subscribe. Recently, I arranged a Zoom call with our longtime production assistant, John Dayton, who's been kind enough to answer different questions and share some of the behind the scenes production side of things in the filming of the Waltons that I couldn't remember. So here I'm going to share with you some of that Zoom meeting that we had. So getting into some of the questions that I get asked that I didn't know how to answer, uh, one being some of these are technical things, the practical water on the set. When you're in the kitchen and all of a sudden for a scene, we actually see the water coming out. Someone you know, pours a glass, someone's washing dishes. How did we have water on the set? <laughs> well, I'd like to tell you it was magic. Oh, well, However, I know that. <laughs> it was a garden hose. <laughs> From where? <laughs> we had potable water um, on the south side of the stage. Um, it was the, the side of the stage where we entered from outside. So there was a potable water um, faucet there. And that's what we did. Yeah. Okay. And I mean, there were times if you weren't going to drink the water. I mean, we could, if you were really going to drink a lot of water, then we had um, a, um, a, a, a container, um, many gallons of fresh drinking water and used a different hose. But basically that was it. It was a hose. Now okay. I never got, I never connected it myself because that was out of my department. You know? Right. And then we'd have a big catch basin underneath the, that's right. Because the piping it, it, underneath didn't go anywhere. Yeah. About a bucket. bucket. <laughs> yeah. Per take, dump it, depending on how much water had to run. Yeah. Yeah. Um, okay. So it just kind of came in from the outside. Because I remember um, just off of the kitchen set um, between where the stove was and where the cabinets were, there was a door. And through that door then was where the prop department had their sort of on set kitchen that they used to. Right. prep food right. for like, scenes and they'd come it, through there. Who was it, Tony or uh, um, Freddie Westcott? Did Freddie props. and Leon. Um, Leon Schotter for a lot of years was our prop and Freddie. And then, and I don't know if, if um, Eddie Villa, our craft service, if he ever. No, uh, I don't think Eddie. Like no, but I remember uh, Freddie cooked some stuff at home. Mm. And we're bringing it. I remember Irish stew. He made that one time. Mm. I, uh, you, you know, you guys couldn't care less because you take a, a bite or two and that was it. It depended on the scene, you know, because yeah. if it was one where we were mid meal or starting a meal and we all had to dive in and then the conversation continued, then we actually did have to eat more. But, you know, a lot of times they tried to make it right at the beginning and just as the scene, uh, just as people would start eating, the scene would end because it was all of us getting ready to start a meal. So then we'd kind of not really have to eat, but it, or it was the end of a meal or something. So those were a little easier, but when it was into but the what, meal and mid meal, then everybody had to deal with it. <laughs> but, it but when you sit for hours, that food doesn't yeah. quite taste the same. No. And then, and then they cover it up and you go to lunch and then you come back and they uncover it. It was like, it was so charming, but it was edible. I get asked that a lot. The food was, I mean, it may not have always been real palatable. It might've been cold and kind of, but it was not plastic food. We never had fake plastic food. It was always real, you know. Um, about that, yeah. about that door. Yes, the mystery door. Yeah, was that ever explained? <laughs> it was, um, there was in one show, um, Ralph came out of there, I think with like a ham or something. So it was kind of like a pantry or, um, it was kind of like the, you know, because there was another door next to where the ice box ended up being yeah. that I think one time I, in an episode I've watched, um, I think John boy came in from there or something. And, um, and like the door by the front door that we rarely saw, um, that, that at one, in one case, I think grandma came out of there, like from their bedroom. So those were the doors that we hardly ever used that I'd be like, oh yeah, I don't remember. They were used so rarely that. You know, it was just a guess as to what was behind those doors or what was supposed to be behind the doors. So um, as you came down the stairs, there was a platform that right. was elevated above the living room and above the kitchen. Right. And there was a door there. Yeah. I and that was into that grandma and grandpa. Bedroom. 
Yeah, that was a bedroom. Yeah, and it went, because then when you went into that room, you went down two or three stairs into mm-hmm. grandma, grandpa's room. I've been asked this and I can't remember. You know, like when we did, when you moved further onto the set and there was the upstairs and there was a section where you could come, where you could see someone down the hall coming from upstairs. So we would, there was a little yep. platform that was hidden right. and then we'd come up the final stairs and we were right by where the right. three stairs were to the attic, et cetera. Did they dig down into Yes. Stage to create that hole yes. there. Yes, okay. that, that wasn't pre-existing, or I, I don't know. I mean, it, it uh, it's always been part of the set, so I assume I wasn't there for the pilot, but yeah, for the know. first season. Um, yeah, I, I was always yes. there, so I don't know if it if. if and I got to always... tell you, there was dirt down there. <laughs> ah. hmm. there okay. was dirt down there. The reason I remember that is on the Ferris wheel. Who directed it? Oh my God, Larry Dobkin didn't Larry? Well, the director. Mm-hmm. I believe it was. I think it was Larry. Larry, yeah. He wanted a point of view of Elizabeth as she fell down the stairs. Mm-hmm. So to do that, I ordered a handheld camera, thirty-five millimeter. Wow. And um, I believe that uh, the camera operator could have been Dick Rawlings. Anyway, the camera operator took the camera like this hand and and we counted one, two, three. And he threw the camera down the stairs (laughs) and and we were rolling and the camera's rolling. And I remember um, saying, you can still hear it. (laughs) It was still going. (laughs) <laughs> because it was high speed because we wanted that to be a slow motion oh, wow. uh, a slow motion shot now i did look at ferris wheels one of my favorite episodes but of many um but i did look at it closely and i believe we didn't use that shot um it would have had to have been at the beginning of the ferris wheel the opening where we have this crazy dream sequence mm-hmm. of um cammy bless her heart um, I don't remember seeing a shot like that when I saw. Yeah, that. I, I I don't think it was used, mm-hmm. but it was the first and only time I saw anyone throw a camera down steps. And Did someone just, catch it, or was it landing on a, a pad? Or <laughs> no, it landed in the dirt. Oh no! Yeah, at the and bottom. It was okay. Yeah, yeah it was fine. <laughs> Um, you know, with movies that have a lot of stunts and car driving and things like that, you, they'll plant the camera and it'll, it'll get run over, you know. So, um, yeah, that happens. But uh, this was a nice camera. <laughs> wow. Fun. Crazy. Okay. Um, <laughs> I'm going to move on to another um, practical question, which was the fireplaces. Like when the fireplace burned, like when you could see that it was burning or when the wood stove was burning. Um, we're on a soundstage. How did they vent those? Um, okay. I don't remember the stove. I do, I remember very funny things about the stove, but I don't remember ever having a wood fire in there. Yeah. Uh, there were, there were episodes where you literally saw the wood in okay. the stove burning. Okay. And Eric said he thought that they had a vent that they piped all the way up and out. There and was a vent. The yeah. There was a vent that went all that that was a 35 foot, by the way, ceiling. It was 35 feet above the floor. But yes, there was that vent. And uh, we used uh, propane. I mean, just like a barbecue, you know, for the fire in the fireplace. Um, it was it was really simple. You know, it was like a gas fireplace today. OK, um, you could change the color of the flames. Um, if you look at um, Robin Hood that was shot at Warner Brothers, you will see that in the old Technicolor days, they used a very vivid orange, orangish, uh, reddish, yellow flame. Hmm. Um, and that that color depends on the gas that's used. So, you know, you use the appropriate gas for the appropriate flame you want. And... Um, most people know that the flames in a barbecue grill uh, don't really look like um, a firewood. They are flames that come off of logs burning. So there were mixtures of gas that could be used. 
Mm-hmm. Um, I don't know why I don't remember the stove. What I do remember about that stove was we were shooting a scene in the kitchen and, um, oh, gee, Olivia had to pour coffee. <laughs> and I remember her going to the stove, putting her hand right on the top of the stove, picking up the coffee pot with the pot holder and bring it over to the table. Sinensky was directing. And, you know, I never wanted to stop anything. It wasn't my business to stop things, but it was my business to spot things. And I said, Ralph, she just leaned against the stove. He went, cut. And, and poor, poor Michael, she says, what I do? What I do? What I do? He says, you're leaning on the stove. Yeah, I just, I just was watching an episode I think yesterday or something. And there's a point where grandpa gets up during the night and he's going to warm some milk and, and, you know, he put it on, he put a, you know, like a metal saucepan on the stove. And then like 30 seconds later, he goes over with his bare hand and takes it off the stove to pour the milk. (laughs) I'm like, oops. (laughs) So um, another thing I get asked a lot is um, about the cars. Now I know at the end of every episode, it would say, you know, automobiles courtesy of, I think, movie world, Blaine Park. So what was the deal? Were they all rented, leased, any owned? Yeah. No, no, no. Well, the production company didn't own vehicles other than the ones that we drove to work. <laughs> right. I just didn't know because we used that old green truck for so many years. You know, I didn't now, know. But Warner Brothers, it, the company itself, had a small stable of vehicles. Okay. And, and mostly they were old, older vehicles. And uh, if Lorimar needed one, they'd have to pay Warner Brothers for the use of it. Okay. By the way, you know, we paid for every day that stage was set with us. So mm-hmm. even on days we weren't working, we paid rental fees to uh, Warner Brothers mm-hmm. or the Burbank Studios. Wow. So the vehicles were a mix of some from they were a mix. Movie it, World it, and some from Warner Brothers. Right. And when when specific ones were needed, oh, what episode was that where that really fancy car? The actress? She had the... Yes, that was the one. Yeah. Um, if you had an order like that, you might have to, if uh, Movie World didn't have it, you might have to go um, yourself. It would, would have been my responsibility or, or the first, but generally it would be my responsibility to find one. And you might have to rent it from an individual. Huh. So, uh, yeah, it, Cars were expensive. Hmm. Those cars we were used expensive. a lot of them. We used a we used lot, a of, lot of them. Yeah. Okay. People are always asking me, what kind of car was that? And I'm like, oh, I'm sorry. I'm not that much of a car person. So <laughs> trying to source that information because it was always tough. Um, same thing with we the were, animals. I mean, we used, I can't believe how many animals we used. You know, okay, goats. Besides the normal, you know, goats and, and chickens Cow. and cows and the and the mule and, mule. and we had a raccoon and a peacock and pigs and and Yancey raccoon. had all of his animals and we had a fox. Just hilarious. And we had a deer and we had the little spider monkey and the carnival and we. I mean, it was just like every time I turn around, it's like, oh gosh, there's another animal and <laughs> bullfrogs and I mean, it was you know, calico the cat. And, you know, I did a whole episode about the animals and and the number of animals that then people commented on that I didn't remember to mention, you know, and I was trying to pull stills of all of them. I'm like, I, you know, I'd have to go through every single episode to try and find all the animals we use. But, you know, I, I I mean, I'm used to animal wranglers and that they, you know, that they would source them and stuff. Yes. Yes. Okay. And the chickens, by the way, originally did stay overnight. Um, and weekends, but when Will started collecting eggs, they got a little bit, <laughs> taking them home, they got a little upset with him, the Wrangler did, and uh, that overnight stay soon got uh, eliminated. Yeah. I don't okay. know why. I mean, they got the Greens people, was it Greens? I don't know. Anyways, I remember them getting upset over Will growing corn or something actually growing because i understand that he planted that that's what i had heard was that he's the one that planted that garden and he took care of it a lot maybe that's how the argument went you know if you planted it you know then it's then it's yours but 
as you know, and rightly so, our unions were very strict, very strict about yeah. what you could do, what you can't do. You know, when we were moving so fast on the Waltons, um, it's amazing that we got, this, what we got was so wonderful in the short time we had to shoot these episodes. I hope you've enjoyed this, and I'll be back again with more behind the scenes of the Waltons and more Ask Judy. Thanks for watching.